Hey, this is George from Kingfisher Woodworks. So I've got three commission tables coming up, starting with this bridal joint walnut table, this elm burl veneer table, and then this very large conference table made out of a log that I've been drying the last three years right here, which I believe is water oak or lava oak. I'm not sure, but we'll start with this walnut table and just kind of see how it goes with this whole YouTube video thing. So... Here I am just picking out the wood, bringing it into the shop, picking out my cuts, chopping it down to size. We're, we're starting with the legs here, so really just getting everything milled up as uh, best I can, saving as much wood as possible. So, you know, the smaller you cut things down, kind of the more wood you can save as you're milling it. So here we are, we got the square edge up against the fence that we got off the joiner and now we're cutting the outside edge to get it totally square and now we're cutting each of those milled boards down to the actual leg size. So here are all the blanks. We're just going to glue these together to get the thickness. It's over a little over two inches so you got to glue some wood together to get that and that also makes it a bit more stable as it's two separate pieces of wood rather than just one. So here we are gluing up, getting uh, everything nice and clamped, wait a little while, and then we come back in with the dull chisel to scrape all that glue up. And it's kind of important to get as much of this as possible as it can dull the saw blades a bit. So now we're squaring up this jointer fence as best as possible because this is going to establish the square for basically the entire leg. So we're getting it flat here on the jointer, putting it through the planer to get that parallel edge, get it all square all the way around, and then cut it down to its, its size. And then we chop off one end to get that totally square against the already squared edge, set up a stop block, and then cut every leg against the stop block as stop blocks are really the only way to get everything the exact same length. Next here are all of our legs cut to size and then I'm laying out all the mortises for the bridle joint. And this is pretty critical, just get everything laid out. There are all my lines. And I'm gonna cut these on the table saw. So first thing to do is set up these fence stops using this woodpecker rip fence thing that I really like it allows the fence to not go too far either direction. You can kind of set it and then just use it for every leg. So here we're using a homemade tenoning jig that I made years ago and just haven't changed, but it works pretty well. So I just haven't switched it up, but it just rides along the fence there and you clamp the piece to it, make sure it's square and just slowly chop through. Um, Dado stack wouldn't work here because it can't go tall enough, so we're just using a normal normal blade, and I'll go back and clean that up with a chisel a little bit afterwards, but yeah, here we just slowly go through. There's one of them sitting right there, and then we taper each of the legs after we get that uh, mortise in, and this is another thing I bought very early on in my woodworking career. I think it was literally one of the first things I bought to taper legs, and it really does work pretty well, uh, so I've just continued using it. And then here we are going into a mistake. All right, this is one of those mistakes you can see coming, but you're flowing and then you just end up doing it. So what happened was you're only supposed to taper the two inside edges of the legs, which is done according to the mortises on top. So they all line up and the whole table will have the inside edges tapered. I did not do that, made the mistake, and I also cut through the thin section of them, uh, which causes you to cut into that other piece of wood, which looks horrible. So... I had to go back and redo all that again. It was just basically a complete failure from every way. But here we are. Don't have to see all that again. Here are all the new legs and moving on. So next we are cutting up and milling all the wood for the aprons, the other half to this bridal joint. So quickly run through that. Don't need to see that again. That's cutting it to the final size. And I had some chip out because it's kind of curly. So I had to put it through that wide belt real quick to get rid of it. 
And then this is just cutting the small slivers off of each side of the wood so that it'll slip into that mortise. And this is very much finessing this. You really don't want to take too much because obviously you cannot put it back. So you just very slowly, gradually work up to the perfect fit. And switching over to hand tools to really finesse it, but I'm horrible with them. So that router plane wasn't really working out because it wasn't wide enough to fit in there without tilting at all. So I switched over to this rabbiting block plane and just taking off thousands of an inch at a time very slowly over and over just until it just fits perfectly in there and um, hitting each side and you really kind of can't go slowly enough because you just really don't want to mess up here and then have to go back and redo parts all over again like I did for the legs. Now this is cutting the bottom out so that it will slip over the bottom of the mortise on the leg and just completely hide everything. And again, hard to get right up to the line with the table saw, so hit it with the block plane a little bit to get it all evened up. And we ended up with a pretty good fit on, on this bridle joint. Boom, and we'll pretend every single one fit exactly like that, but that was good. We add some glue, let it slip in, clamp it down, and we are pretty much good to go. Have to adjust a little bit, unclamp, just get everything dead even, dead straight, and then I messed up all the videoing for this part, so I apologize, but I'm just using dominoes on the... Uh, long apron stretchers and assembling so that is done now i'm picking out the wood for the top and that requires a ton of milling which you don't need to see and there it is all done so here are two boards and this is a good example of how you can kind of have different color variations in walnut that you need to watch out for and you can kind of see them between these two certainly different grain patterns and different colors so you need to be really careful about uh kind of how you place things and i like to just spend a ton of time here looking at every board spraying it down and really just figuring out which boards go best where and once you do that you just take them to the joiner over and over till you get perfect edges and then you can glue them together as we are doing here so we just spend a lot of time here make sure everything's flat no dominoes or biscuits to put them together just glue and you can see we get all the knots and stuff filled with epoxy and once all that's dry you go in with the dull chisel and you start scraping the glue off and normally right here in the past i would go in with a belt sander and just spend a few hours flattening it sanding sanding but um, in this past year i actually got this wide belt sander that has just been pretty incredible and when i got this table order they asked for 34 inches and this thing can fit 36 inches so i was pretty ecstatic about uh, being able to fit the whole table through here so we turn this thing on and yeah just get it all set up get all the bed rays right get this freaking cart out of the way i need one of those hydraulic raised ones but i do not have one and then we just start feeding it through and i just want to say with these wide belt sanders that they can uh, be a little intimidating to buy as like a brand new one of these can be like thirty thousand dollars but i spent two years just surfing facebook marketplace looking for one and ended up picking this thing up for like thirty six hundred dollars which was cheaper than the table saw so these things are very gettable for a small shop now three phase power is a, a different story because they mostly run on three phase but uh these are not unobtainable for a small shop and if, if you just do some work look out for good deals do a lot of research you'll be able to find them and as you can see in a matter of minutes i got this table flat and just ready to go it's just saves hours and hours of, of normal work so I cannot stress enough, if, if you look for them, you can find good deals on them and you can get one. So don't think they're unobtainable. And then here, I just go around and cut square edges onto every side of the table and get it to its final size. And once we get that done, we do a bunch of sanding, start filling all the little holes that I didn't get with CA glue. So we don't have any little specks in the table or anything. And then we just 
random orbit sand all that off and we sand up to 120 and then get the eighth inch round over and start breaking all the edges making it nice and smooth to the touch and then i sand the whole table to 220 grit and move on to a probably controversial step which is staining this walnut actually walnut and the reason i like this is it really deepens and darkens the color but it also fixes some of those sapwood issues and any incongruent coloring and stuff that can sometimes look good but sometimes not look right like it did on this table and then it just really evens it up and makes it all look even deep rich color and that that's just kind of how i do it um sometimes but it is a case-by-case case scenario and in this scenario i felt like it needed it so then how i finish these is i actually put two to three coats of oil-based polyurethane on then hit it with a sanding sealer and then the water-based polyurethane you have to have the sanding sealer in between them but this 2k water-based polyurethane is just very durable has a bunch of scratch resistant stuff in it and leaves just a very velvety beautiful finish and doesn't deaden it at all as long as you have that oil base down before the water base and again the sanding sealer in between them but this is the finished table i'm pretty happy with the way it turned out and it's not the most complicated or crazy table in the world but it was a really good test run for this youtube platform as this video and stuff is very new to us and we will get much better at it and and work on it and just kind of test it out and the next two tables are going to actually be pretty crazy and uh, some of the more difficult tables i've built this veneer burl table i have very little experience veneering but this one's going to be really cool and then this table that i've been waiting to build for three years drying that wood is going to be spectacular so hit that notification bell like and subscribe and thank you all so much